All right, so let's make an actual real life example of this. So in the complex trait module, we kind of learned about this structure, but quickly I'll go over. We have our phenotypes of n individuals. We have a genotype matrix. This is our effect sizes. So this is the effect of SNP1, effect of SNP2, so on and so forth. And these are the true effects. And then we have some environmental component. Now, if I wanna fit this model, I wanna estimate what these, what these betas are, possibly I'll get something like this. I'll now get this vector of beta hats. The hat represents that this isn't the true value, but it's rather an estimate of what the true value is. Do you have a question there? Okay. And then these are the corresponding p-values. So you can see these true values, they, or the estimated values do correlate well with the true values, but they're not exactly because they're estimates. So if we use a threshold of 0.05, we can look at the guys, the betas that we have, and we can look at this corresponding p-values, and like, okay, these three had p-values that were less than 0.05. And so we're gonna say those are significant, we're gonna reject the null, and assume sort of some sort of alternate. So if we do that, it turns out that for one of these guys, do, 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 this guy, it turns out that the true effect is zero, but due to random chance, we rejected the null. So this is a false positive. So we rejected a null even when the truth is there was no effect. Whereas for this guy and this guy, these both do have true effects. So we rejected the null and it, there was actually effect. And one of them, this guy right here, due to random chance wasn't actually significant. So for this guy, true effect, but we accepted the null because we didn't have enough evidence. And for the rest of them, there was no effect and we accepted the null, which is fantastic. Um, however, we don't really like that false positive over there because false positives aren't really something we want to deal with too often. So what we could do is we could lower our threshold from that 0 0.05 to 0 0.001. And if we were going to do that, this is the only one that now passes that significant threshold because it's the only one with a p-value lower than that threshold. So as you can see, we no longer have a false positive, but rather than of the three variants that do have a true effect, now we only actually find one of them, whereas before we found two of them. So as we increase the threshold, we have fewer false positives, or sorry, as we make the threshold more stringent, we have fewer false positives, but we also find fewer things that actually have an effect. So there's this trade-off that you run into when you adjust this threshold. So, um, so as we adjust this threshold, one thing we can start calculating is what's called the false discovery rate. And the false discovery rate, it's the number of false positives that you have divided by the number of positives you have. And where the number of positives is simply the number of false positives and true positives. So if we look over here on the left, our false discovery rate is the one false positive divided by the three positives that we have. So here, it's telling us that 33% of what we said is significant is in fact not, and we were just wrong about. That's a pretty high false discovery rate. And uh, this could become a real problem if say, you need to then follow up on all these discoveries and everything you follow up on is gonna cost you like half a million dollars. You really don't wanna have like 33% of all of your millions of dollars like being wrong, you would much rather have something like this where your false, your false discovery rate is zero. So it's like you have one effect, you're really confident about it and you do that follow up and it costs you half a million dollars and you're like money well spent, hopefully. Um, so yeah, as you increase the threshold because you no longer have that false positive, it decreases your false discovery rate. And there's actually a way that you can figure out what threshold you should use as your significant threshold so that you can control your false discovery rate at some level. Say you're willing to tolerate like 10% false discoveries or 20%. There is a way to actually figure out what your threshold should be for that. And it's complicated and it's not something we're gonna do in this module, but be aware that that does happen. So when people say we did like FDR control or like Benjamin E. Hochberg, like FDR control or anything like that, 
what they're saying is that they took a whole bunch of their discoveries and they controlled their threshold in such a way so that when they reported their list of discoveries, they controlled for themselves how many of those discoveries would be false positives.